Welcome to the discussion on Module 4, Proof of Cash. So for this video, we will be able to analyze and prepare two bank reconciliation, two date bank reconciliation, know the computation of deposits in transit and outstanding checks, understand the nature of proof of cash, and be able to prepare reconciliation showing proof of cash. So ano yung ibig sabihin nitong two date bank reconciliation? So earlier, diniscuss natin yung konsepto ng bank reconciliation at kung paano mag-prepare ng mismong bank reconciliation at iba pang reconciling item. So, itong two-date bank reconciliation is essentially the same. Ang pinagkaiba lang niya before ay one date lang ang ginagawa natin. Pero in this uh, uh, bank reconciliation, gumagamit ka na ng two dates in, uh, and then nire-reconcile mo yung balances niyan. Same procedure as that of the one-date bank reconciliation. Uh, ano ang mga information na kailangan? For book balance, your beginning and ending. Sa bank balance, your beginning and ending. Sa deposits in transit, your beginning and ending. Sa outstanding checks, your beginning and ending. Mapapansin mo, di ba, before, dun sa bank reconciliation na one-date, uh, yung total deposit in transit lang ang kinukuha mo. So, uh, in this case, dahil two dates siya, nire-reconcile mo yung beginning and ending balances niya. Kaya siya two date bank reconciliation. So, how do we reconcile that? Sa computation ng bank balance, uh, um, it is just uh, yung template na balance per book beginning of the month plus your book debits during the month less the book credits during the month and uh, it will yield to your balance per book at the end of the month. So, itong balance per book at the beginning of the month, kung ano yung beginning balance mo sa iyong company ledger. Yung book debits na tinutukoy dito, uh, since this is a book record, ang ibig sabihin lang ng book debits niya yan ay yung lahat ng debits mo sa iyong cash in bank account. So, for example, nakakolekta ka from your uh, from your receivable, you debit cash, uh, dineposit mo yun. For example, you debit cash in bank and then you credit the 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 income or the receivable account uh, that will be included to your book debits. Itong book credits naman is any uh, disbursements on your cash in bank account. For example, uh, bumili ka ng supplies so you debit uh, office supplies expense and then you credit cash in bank uh, your your cash in bank account. That will uh, form part of your book credits for the month. So, essentially, ang ibig sabihin lang ng book debits is your cash uh, cash receipts at itong book credits is your cash disbursements. Next, the computation of the bank balance. Ang ibig sabihin naman nito, uh, you begin with your balance per bank statement. Uh, balance per bank, beginning of the month, you add your bank credits, you deduct your bank debits during the month, and then it will yield uh, to your balance per book at the end of the month. So, ano itong mga bank credits na to? Ang ibig sabihin lang ng bank credits na yan is uh, these are all the items credited dun sa account ng depositor. Diba? When we discuss, sa, sa point of view ng bank, ang uh, sa point of view kasi ng bank, uh, Kung babalikan mo doon sa discussion natin on bank reconciliation, kapag nag-deposit ka sa banko, they debit cash and then credit yung company account. Yung, for example, company XYZ account. So, yun ang nakakredit. Kaya, at the point of view of the bank, ang ibig sabihin ng bank credits, yung mga dineposito mo sa yung account. So, kapag bank debits naman, lahat ng... Uh, lahat ng uh, withdrawals or mga debit memos related to your bank account, lahat ng uh, uh, bawas naman sa iyong bank account kapag bank debit. So, i-add and i-deduct mo lang yan to get your ending balance per bank. So, how do we compute now for the deposit in transit naman? The deposit in transit at the beginning of the month, kung meron ka ng available data dyan, you just add your cash receipts deposited during the month. So, kapag yung deposit in transit, ibig sabihin, ito yung mga uh, naka-record na sa'yo as, as deposit na collection mo. However, nung chinex sa bank, hindi pa siya, uh, hindi pa siya naka-reflect sa yung bank statement. 
So, deposit in transit, kung magkano man ang beginning nun, i-add mo yung mga uh, dineposit mo during the month. Ang ibig, pag pinag-add mo tong deposit in transit beginning plus your deposited during the month, uh, it will be termed as the total deposit to be acknowledged by the bank. Ibig sabihin, yung, yung dating, uh, yung deposit in transit na hindi pa nila nare-reflect plus itong dineposit mo ngayon, Uh, ito yung dapat na i-acknowledge ng bank for this period. Minus, pag minus mo yung, yung actual na in-acknowledge nila, yung deposits actually acknowledged by the bank, it will yield to your deposit in transit at the end of the month. Ibig sabihin, kung ano man yung magiging balance dito, ito pa yung amount ng deposit na ni-record mo na sa iyong company ledger pero hindi pa na i Uh, hindi pa siya na i-credit sa iyong bank account. So, next, we go to the outstanding checks. Okay. The outstanding checks, beginning of the month, ito yung mga cheque na na-issue mo na, pero hindi pa na-de-deposit or na e cash ng iyong uh, ng payee. So, kapag i-add mo the, uh, the beginning, uh, you, you add the checks drawn by the depositor during the month, it will uh, be termed as the total checks to be paid by the bank. Ibig sabihin, yung mga cheque at yung mga cheque na hindi pa na i-encash noong nagsimula ang buwan plus yung mga uh, mga bagong gawang cheque, yung mga uh, uh, ginawa mo pa lang, pin-repair mong cheque ngayon na nasa payee na pero uh, na nasa payee na, Pag pinagsama mo yun, yun uh, it will yield you to your total checks to be paid yung by the bank. So, ito yung lahat ng uh, cheque na dapat ay bayaran ng banko. So, hindi lang natin alam kung kailan. So, when you deduct yung checks paid by the bank at a particular month, so, ito na yung actual na binayaran ng banko uh, that will uh, result to your ending outstanding check balance. So, ito pa yung yung amount na mag uh, uh, na result dito ay yung mga cheque that will be in cash or deposited in the succeeding months. So, having learned yung konsepto nitoong beginning, uh, itong computation ng two-date bank reconciliation, deposit in transit and outstanding checks because there are problems na uh, would require you to to identify the amount of the total deposit to be acknowledged by the bank or the total checks to be paid by the bank and the ending outstanding checks balance so merong mga ganong problem may mga problem din na, na would require you to squeeze bibigyan ka ng outstanding checks at the end of the month tas ang i-computein mo is yung outstanding checks at the beginning of the month or the checks drawn by the depositor during the month. So, may mga ganong klaseng problem. So, dapat tandaan mo lang itong uh, format kung papaano siya kinocompute. At uh, especially the logic kung papaano siya kinocompute. So, what is the reason on the, of, on the creation of a proof of cash statement? A proof of cash is an expanded reconciliation in that it includes proof of receipts and disbursement. So, itong proof of cash, uh, this is essentially a, a bank reconciliation statement but um, nagbibigay ito ng um, additional uh, columns for receipts and disbursements. So, ina-analyze niya in detail yung mga na-receive at yung mga na-disburse na amounts. This is useful in discovering possible discrepancy in discrepancies in handling cash. Meron kasing mga tendency na naka-record na sa iyong books pero when you check at the bank statements ay hindi pa siya uh, naka-reflect doon. So mas ma-identify natin kung saan uh, item ng galing yung discrepancies. It comes in three forms just like the bank reconciliation statement, the adjusted balance, the book to bank method and the bank to book method. However, in the interest of time, we will be discussing the adjusted balance method since uh, essentially, kapag natutunan mo naman itong adjusted balance method, yung book-to-bank and bank-to-book methods are just reversal of the entries in the adjusted balance method. So, let us proceed in the problem. So, binigyan ka ng detalye on, the on your January 31 and February 28. So, these are two uh, 
take dates. Uh, ang cut-off nung isa, January 31, ang cut-off nung, nung isang month is February 28. So, tingnan muna natin, balance per book, balance per bank, the book debits, book credits, bank debits, uh, bank credits, deposits in transit, outstanding checks, NSF checks, service charge, and the notes uh, collected. Okay, let us analyze uh, the statement. So, uh, in the in the preparation of a proof of cash a statement, you must have uh, these columns. Yung columns ng, uh, ng, ng first date na i-reconcile -re natin. A column for receipts, column for disbursements, and the column for the last date na i-reconcile -re mo. Okay, then uh, dito muna tayo sa book records. You will analyze itong book records. So, the balance per book according to the data for January 31 is 50,000. So, ayan siya. For receipts, asan ang receipts dyan? So, papaano mo i-analyze itong receipts and disbursements? Ano ba itong receipts and disbursement na to? Is this for January 31 or is this for February 28? The answer is, this is for February 28. So, itong receipts and disbursements na to ay related yan sa February 28, yung period na, uh, yung later na period. Because, ang tinitingnan mo dyan is the, the reconciliation between the end, kumbaga ito ang beginning mo, yung January 31, and then the additions are the receipts, the 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 deductions are the disbursements and the ending balance is the the last yung later date yung February 28. So san mo hahanapin itong receipts since this is book. So itong receipts are book debits. So ang book debits mo ay 200,000. Yon. Ang book credits mo ay disbursements. Ang disbursements ay bawas sa iyong cash. So ex debit expense and then credit cash in bank. So, yan ay book credits. 180,000. So, when you add 50,000 plus 200,000, that is 250 minus 180,000 is 70,000. Your ending balance per book. Remember, book pa lang ang ina-adjust mo. So, mamaya natin i-reconcile. Ay, book pa lang ang i reconcile mo. So, later natin i-reconcile yung bank proof of cash. Okay, so okay na tayo dito sa beginning balances for the book, debits, credits, so bank, debits and credits, deposit and transit, outstanding checks, these are uh, bank reconciling items, NSF check, service charge and note collected. So dito muna tayo siguro sa note collected by the bank. So, since uh, uh, the note collected ay merong amount for January 31 and merong amount for February 28, we need to reconcile these balances. For example, the note collected by the bank. Uh, under bank, uh, kapag itong, uh, when you are looking at the first, yung initial date, yung 15,000, this is note collected by the bank. Ibig sabihin, nakolekta ni bank yaan, uh, however, uh, hindi mo pa alam. So, ano ang gagawin mo on your January 31 balance? Ia-add mo yan sa yung January 31 balance. Kasi di ba ganyan naman ang treatment ng mga note collections? This is a, uh, ano ang term natin na nga dito for note collection? These are uh, credit memos recognized by the bank. So, i-add mo yan sa iyong January 31 balance. Now, what is the effect of the 15,000 on the February 28 uh, statements, itong proof of cash ng February 28? Remember, itong note collected ay, uh, itong note collected na 15,000, uh, since iyan ay isang credit memo,
uh, this note uh, collected for January 31 ano ang effect niyan dun sa book receipts ng iyong ng uh, book receipts ng current month kailan siya irerecord Normally, yung mga notes, dahil nag-generate nag ka ng iyong bank reconciliation statements, yung mga book receipts, uh, yung notes collected mo for January, note collected by the bank for January. Kumbaga, kinolekta yan ni bank, pero yung notes ay for January talaga. So, ano ang effect niyan? It will be recorded on the current, it will be recorded only on the current month. Therefore, nakarecord siya as receipts for the current month, pero dapat siya ay nakarecord on January 31 dahil dun talaga siyang, uh, kumbaga, it is collected by the bank on January. Hindi naman pang February na yan nakolekta. However, uh, nun mo lang siya na i-record on February. So, uh, using the proof of cash, pwede mo yan i-correct. So, yan ay i-add mo sa iyong January 31 balance and then ibawas mo sa receipts mo for February dahil yan ay nakasama dito sa 2. Normally, yan ay nakasama dyan sa 200,000. So, ibawas mo yan dyan. What? Next, itong February naman. Merong collections, by the note collected by the bank for February na 20,000. So, what is the effect on the receipts by the bank? So, itong note collections by the bank, it, uh, does, it, does this increase the, the book receipts for that month? The credit memos uh, for the, of the current month increase Okay, analyze natin itong note collected by the bank uh, for February. Uh, ito kasing, ito kasing uh, book receipts mo na to na for February ay nakolekta mo na for, for 20,000. Ito ay kinolekta ni bank for the, for the entity. So, pa paano ang treatment nito? On the February statement, positive yan because it is a credit memo. So, anong effect niyan sa yung book receipts? Dahil yaan, itong Febra uh, dahil yan ay February um, notes, normally yan ay hindi pa yan nare-record on the same month, katulad ng nangyari sa January. So, yan ay normally mare-record on March pa. So, ibig sabihin, understated ang iyong February book receipts. So, ano ang gagawin mo dahil understated ang iyong February bank book receipts? i-add mo na siya doon dahil hindi siya kasama dito sa 200. So, anong ina-account mo dito? Yung talagang mga receipts for February. Now, let's go to the NSF check. For January, ay meron daw uh, no sufficient fund check. Itong no sufficient fund check is a debit memo, di ba? Originally, dun sa one date bank reconciliation natin. So, dahil yan is a debit memo, dapat yan ay ibawas mo. Ibawas mo on your, uh, in your balance per book. Dahil yan ay ibinalik ni bank dahil walang fund. So, since yan originally ni-record mo, so ibawas mo muna siya dahil hindi pa naman talaga siya na-deposit sa yung bank account. So, on January 31, it is deducted. So, kung paano yung treatment mo doon sa one date bank reconciliation, yun yung treatment mo dito sa January 31 balance mo. So, ano ang effect niyan sa yung February disbursements naman since ito ay, ay debit memo? Yaan ay uh, marirecord as disbursement for February dahil yan ay isang adjustments on your uh, book item. So, since, uh, since yan ay nakasama dito sa disbursements na 180,000 for February, ibawas mo siya because it does not uh, relate to February. 
it is for January. So, ibawas mo ang January NSF check. Next, service charge. Uh, the same lang din. Ay, ah, dito muna tayo sa February, NSF check. So, what is the effect kapag uh, NSF check naman for February? The same lang ang treatment because this is a debit memo. Ibawas mo yan sa yung February statement. So, ano ang effect niyang uh, February NSF check on your uh, disbursements naman? Normally, yan ay mababawas pa lang on March. So, yan ay hindi nakasama dito sa disbursements mo for February. So, ang nung gagawin mo, i-add mo yan sa yung disbursements for February. Next, your service charge is essentially the same logic. Ang sinabi dito, may service charge na 1,000 for January, pero pag February, wala naman. So, ano ba ang treatment ng service charge? This is a debit memo. So, sa January, same treatment lang kung paano mo siya ginagawa sa yung uh, one date bank reconciliation. So, ibawas mo yung 1,000 because uh, yan ay nakabawas na sa yung bank account. So, ibawas mo lang sa yung book, uh, book balance. Dahil normally, this is an adjustment uh, reconciling item yan ay marirecord on February, on the next month. Marirecognize yung adjustment on the next month. Dahil, dahil marirecognize siya on the next month, masasama siya doon sa disbursements for February na dapat ay hindi because it, it relates to January service charge. So, ibawas mo siya doon sa disbursements mo for February. So, bakit siya ibabawas? Because na-overstate ang iyong uh, disbursements for February. So, i-add mo lang lahat at ibawas yung mga items. It will yield you to your adjusted book balances. 59,000 for January 31. The receipts, 25,000. Disbursements, 184,000. And the February 28 ending balance, adjusted book balance is 80,000. So, you can check this by adding and uh, subtracting the disbursements, receipts and disbursements respectively. So, 59,000 plus 205,000 minus 184,000 should be equal to 80,000. Now, let's proceed to rebank this, uh, the proof of cash for the bank items. So, i-lift mo lang lahat ng nasa January 31 bank balance, 84,000, ayun siya, 170,000 ang receipts, Ano ba ang receipts sa bank? At the point of view of the bank, ang receipts is the bank credits. Lahat ng nakakredit sa yung company account. So, yun. 170,000. Sa disbursements naman, uh, there is an error on the presentation. Dapat itong 130,000 na bank debits na nandito, dapat nandito yan. Sa after ng 180. Between 180,000 and 170, dapat nandito siya. So, pakilagay na lang, na lang doon. So, disbursements na ito is for 130,000. So, remember, itong receipts and disbursements, this relates to February 28. Yung February 28 mo naman na ending ba bank balance is 124,000. So, ayun siya. So, when you add this, 84,000 plus 170,000 minus 130,000 should be equal to 124,000. So, ano ba ang mga um, bank reconciling items dito? Yung bank itong deposits in transit lang at yung outstanding check. So, let us analyze and make a proof of cash. So, for January daw, yung deposits in transit is 40,000. So, paano treatment niyan under the yung adjusted balance method? Pag deposits in transit, ina-add lang. So, i-add mo lang yung 40,000. Pansinin mo yung February, in-add niya lang din yung 75,000. So, walang pinagkaiba. <coughs> Excuse me. So, what is, ngayon, i-analyze mo kung ano ang effect nito doon sa uh, receipts or disbursements ng uh, later period, ng February 28. So, in this case, yung, yung deposit in transit mo ng 40,000, uh, kailan ba yan deposit on the bank? Normally, ay on the next month. So, kung January mo yan record as deposit in transit, yan ay maa-adjust on February 28 sa bank statement. So, yun ay masasama sa receipts for February 28 na dapat ay hindi siya doon nakasama. Dahil yun ay deposit mo talaga actually on January. So, ibawas mo siya 
doon. Okay. Ito namang uh, deposits in transit na to na naka-add sa February 28. Ito ay, what is the effect on this, on your receipts? Ito kasi ay marirecord pa lang on March. So, anong effect niyan sa iyong bank receipts? E di maa-understate ka kung sa March pa yan irirecord. So, dahil understated itong 170,000, you add 75,000 to reflect the correct balance. Dahil yan ay deposit in transit naman talaga for February. Next, outstanding checks. So, outstanding check, this is deducted dun sa bank reconciliation. So, January, minus mo agad 65,000 and uh, February, minus mo agad 119,000. Ito siya, 65 and 119. So, outstanding check, binabawas lang naman talaga siya. So, dito ka ngayon mag analyze on the disbursement. Dahil outstanding check is a disbursement, i-analyze mo kung ano ang effect nitong 65,000 na outstanding check on the disbursements on February 28. Understated, understated ba or overstated ba ang effect niya? So, Dahil ang outstanding check is is a check na na naka-prepare na nasa pay na pero hindi niya pa ini-encash, ano ang effect niyan? Normally itong mga outstanding checks na to ay um, dahil hindi yan na in cash within January, uh, may in cash yan probably on on February on the next month. So ibig sabihin, uh, Kapag yan ay na-encash on February, magiging overstated ang iyong disbursements. Tataas ang iyong disbursements na dapat ay, ay itong 65,000 na ito, dapat sa January ito na bawas. Sa January statement ito na bawas na disbursements. However, naisama siya dito sa February dahil nga hindi agad in-encash. So, anong gagawin? Dahil overstated, ibawas mo siya dyan. Same is true with the February Dahil itong 119,000 na ito ay hindi pa to na in cash or na deposit on February, on the next month pa yan, ibig sabihin understated naman ng iyong disbursements. So itong 119,000 na disbursements, dapat ay i-add mo yan sa iyong February disbursements para ma-identify yung correct balance niya. So i-add mo lang at ibawas lahat ng items, you will yield to your adjusted book balance. Therefore, January, it should be 59,000, receipts, 205,000, disbursements, 184,000, and February, 28,000. So, i-add mo in minus 59 plus 205 minus 184 is equal to 80,000. So, dapat yung adjusted book balance and adjusted bank balance ay um, correct siya, ay balance siya. Correct ko lang ito. It should be adjusted bank balance. Adjusted bank balance. Tama ba? 59, 80. 80. Oh, Okay, correct. So, dapat itong proof of cash mo, yung adjusted book balances mo for January, this is disbursements and February 28 is the same across. Kasi kung nagkamali ka, baka may mali kang analysis on the understatement or overstatement. So, essentially, yung book-to-bank and bank-to-book method is the same yung analysis. However, uh, mero, nire-reverse mo lang yung analysis mo. For example, um, ang ginamit mo is book-to-bank method. Uh, lahat ng mga, uh, ng mga bank reconciling item ay i-reverse mo ang treatment mo kapag inad mo yun sa yung book balance. The same is true kapag bank to book ka naman, lahat ng book reconciling items mo ay i-reverse mo naman yun kapag inad mo yun doon, inad or binawas mo doon sa yung uh, bank balance. So, in the interest of time, we will be discussing the adjusted balance method only. So, I think that ends the discussion on module 4, uh, proof of cash. Kung meron kang uh, medyo nakakalito, you can comment on the thread kung saan nakapost itong mismong video. Thank you.